I think it'd be exciting. I have the most boring dreams. It's like, come on, give it to me. I want to dream of something. I need some fantasy. My dreams are all just cleaning and going to the grocery store. <laughs> so I'm like, I want to know what you got for me. You were playing Joanna Constantine. Yes. Very different character in the comic book, but with a very different uh, relative. How are you, how did you combine the two different characters to create this new Joanna Constantine? You know, Lady Joanna Constantine, and especially in the version that we see of her this series, um, my take on it was that she's, um, her heart is uh, not as touched. She's a lot more cold and calculated and cunning. Whereas as we go down the kind of ancestral bloodline, <laughs> ancestral trauma, and um, the cost that it, that of, of uh, coming into the, uh, the, you know, extinguishing demons every day and losing people around you and the weight of that happening over and over and over again. So I feel like for me, I always felt like the contemporary Joanna Constantine, there was just a heavy, like a heavyness and a bit more of a, a, a quite weary, there's a tiredness and a disenchantment and a disillusion. And and, um, and it's the cost of, of so much, of so much loss at that point. And, um, and the idea that you know there are, there are very similar traits between them, but this is a lot more a much more compassionate um, compassionate Constantine and someone um, who's had to use defense mechanisms um, and and uh, develop kind of um, the same way as actually you see with a lot of like comedians, someone who's carrying a lot of pain um, mm. uses uses comedy as like a mirror to kind of deflect from looking inwards too much. Kirby, uh, I once wrote when you were on the Good Place that you were too wonderful to be human. <laughs> what is it about you that you think made you perfect to play uh, Death, who is quite loving and caring? Um, well, honestly, I think being a huge fan of The Sandman helped immensely. Um, I was a fan of the comics. I read them years ago, and Death was one of my absolute favorite characters and one of the characters that stuck with me for for years, right up until until getting the opportunity to audition for this. So I think a lot of it comes from genuine excitement and passion and love. And I think that was sort of my advantage in this. It was that I kind of came to this character with so much love for her already and also so much understanding of this version of, of death, of Neil's version of death, that I think that's kind of what, what pushed it over the edge. How would you say your version of death is different from the comics? I, I mean, I would hope that my version of death is actually very similar to the comics. I mean, you know, we are so fortunate in this adaptation that this is this is Neil's, this continues to be Neil's baby. I mean, so many adaptations are so separated from their creators, whereas this is Neil going, I am reimagining my own characters. I get a chance to sort of reimagine them in a new way and put it on screen. And so I think so much of the essence of, of the death that people know and love and her her warmth and her, her the way she nurtures people and the way she takes her job so seriously and has such reverence for what she does is all there from the comic to the TV show. Now that you've both brought this world to life, let's say you met Morpheus tomorrow. Would you be terrified or excited to meet the Lord of Dreaming? I, as 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 Jenna and Kirby, or as uh, Joanna and Dad? As Jenna and Kirby. It'd kind of be like morbidly like fascinating. <laughs> I think. I think it'd be exciting. I have the most boring dreams. It's like, come on, give it to me. I want to dream of something. I need some fantasy. My dreams are all just cleaning and going to the grocery store. <laughs> so I'm like, I want to know what you got for me. Well, when the season ends, what is it you hope that viewers take away from the show? Each episode is so different. They are they are, they are almost like mini movies, and I hope that the audience, the, the takeaway is that. Uh, particularly for new fans who are not familiar with, with the comics and, and how far there is to, to possibly go. I hope that people kind of take away that this is a world where absolutely anything and everything can happen. This is, it's dark and it's fantasy and it's epic. And there is so much more life here. There is so much more to explore. And I hope it just sort of creates this, this interest in the Sandman. And they are so lucky most of the time when a show that you love ends, that's the end of it. But you could literally go and read the comics and continue it from there. Vanessa, you play Rose Walker, who has one of the most intense and frightening storylines in all of the Sandman, which is really saying something. What unique challenges were, did you have to face by dealing with a literal nightmare, the guy sitting next to you? <laughs> um, um, I didn't really, I didn't have any, um, 
I personally feel like I didn't have any challenges. Um, not with like portraying it, with um, with Rose or with acting out the scenes. And I mean, he's at, I won't lie, he's not very walk scary. In the park. Walk in the park. It was a walk in the She knocked. No, he definitely, yeah, no, it was, um, he's actually, he's very charming and he wasn't very scary. So, um, but the thing is, I mean, it helped because like initially Rose wasn't too scared either. Like obviously, well, he did, you know, um, he did kill a guy, but he wasn't too frightening because he wasn't a direct threat to her initially. Um, so I don't think I had any challenges. It was very easy or very, um, yeah. Well, it's funny you say that he's not that scary because Boyd, I have to ask you, what's it like to look like the Corinthian literally walked off the page? I don't know. Maybe I have to thank my mom and dad for that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, it's it's a really, I mean, the, the character is, you know, iconic in, in, a, in the comics. So we just try to find a way where we we took the one episode from Doll's House, um, but we, we we needed more in the actual you know series, the eight, the ten part series, and and how do we build towards that? So, you know, I was really I was really blessed to be a part of the project, and felt like I had an incredible you know obstacle and a challenge. How do I crack this character? How do I you know find his arc? Um, I, they just gave me a ton to play with. We finish this interview, you close, you, you walk away, and Morpheus is standing right there. Are you excited or terrified? I think, I mean, I would be terrified, like, because he's actually there. I mean, I would be like, I knew it, I knew you were real. And then I would probably run away, I think. Yeah. Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you, thank you, thank you.